How's it going team? Um, today I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the different lure colours, like soft bait colours and then um, also top water lure colours like stick baits and poppers that I usually lean towards and the reasons behind why I personally lean towards those colours. And then I'm going to show you just lately I've been making up some, um, some assist hooks. So I make a lot of my own assists, um, especially for my top water lures, because I can make them up to the length that I, I want sort of thing. So I make these up and then I, I just put them back in the bag if I'm not going to use them or I whack them straight on a lure. But I always try and have a few spares in my um, tackle bag ready to roll. Um, and then, so I'll try and take you guys through exactly how I um, tie up an assist for my top water lures and it's the same way that you would do it for a jig if you tie your own jig assists it's the exact same way that you'd do it for that um, you can use shrink wrap if you want sometimes i do sometimes i don't um, i've never really seen much difference with hookups or staying connected to a fish whether i use um, shrink wrap or not so and also lately I've made up a couple of um, my own, we call it bridal rig needles. Um, I haven't been a huge bridal rigger in the past, but after last year's, or this year's, um, just another fisherman angler's escape comp, uh, me and Muzzle were fishing together and he was bridal rigging all his live baits and I was just going straight through the nose, how I normally do, which is, is a pretty good way of doing it. But um, he seemed to be getting hit more. Personally, I don't know if it was that or it was my trace size. I had a way heavier trace than he did. I think he was running 140 and I was running 220. And the water was pretty calm and clean that day. And big kingies are smart and they're big for a reason. Because they're smart and they don't get caught or they avoid being caught. Um, so yeah, I'll start running you through my soft bait colours that have been working really well lately. Um, Berkeley have just bought out I think three or four new colours and one of those colours I tried out three of the colours over the weekend and one of those colours in particular just absolutely dominated and I caught I don't know four or five real good fish on it and it just was super consistent throughout the entire day. Um, so the softback colours this is the new colour so that is the Ocean Shift jerk shade colour. Um, you guys, some of you guys might have seen this on my Instagram story, but it changes sort of colour in the light. It's hard to see it here, but so that's in a seven inch. Oh, that's not one of them. That's a different. I'll just whack that other one in the bag. That sort of green one. That's a different colour. But the Ocean Shift. It's in a seven inch um, jerk shade that one worked amazingly well um, the reason I chose to go for that one I actually chucked it on it was the first bait of the day that I tried um, it just looked attractive to me um, in the way it changes colors in different lights and it had that big white strike through it and then the darker colors uh, when I'm when I do a lot of free diving I sort of analyze bait fish at, when they're under the water as compared to when you catch one and you hold it in your hand above the water it's it's quite often a lot different and their color underwater when they turn and dart around it changes in different movements and different lights so I thought that could be a real good color to use um, these ones here they're a power bait uh, this color here has worked real well for me this is a five and a half inch in bloodworm colour. Um, caught heaps of real good fish on that. And another favourite which has done real well for me. These are huge these ones. These are nine inch and that one is the pilchard colour. Nine inch pilchard colour. Um, that one slays the fish and often gets the bites from the big dogs. I've been absolutely smoked by a real big snapper when I was using that colour. Um, so yeah, when I 
go to choose a color I sort of try and think of how fish look when I'm free diving and then also what's always worked for me in the past and yeah those consistent colors throughout the years that you use you sort of try and chop and change but you always kind of end up going back to similar colors so I I often just use a very um, natural sort of color range but when I'm fishing in murky water or yeah murky water and then also in some of the harbors and stuff up here after there's been a bit of rain or there's been a big stir up I'll use a real bright color so these ones here work pretty good after a big rain just to make it pop and stand out in the water when the water's a bit um, murky uh, these little guys here the main ones in this tub um, what are they a five inch blue pepper neon they work real well and I've caught heaps of good trevally on these ones in the harbors um, so they're real good um, when I'm fishing I generally fish either in harbors or the majority of the time when I'm soft baiting I fish on a rocky coastline so I I pretty much just run jerk shads I don't really run much other stuff maybe a paddle tail paddle tails are really good um, and then if I'm going over the sand under workups or if I've got like known areas where I know that hold snapper like a shell bed or a like an area where there's shellfish on the bottom or a worm bed or something like that I'll quite often use a grub but I've never had huge success with grubs in the wash or in the real rocky coastline I think that a jerk shad just works so much better so I just run with a jerk shad or a paddle tail um, right I'll take you guys through I'll bring it down a bit closer take you guys kind of through how I try and assist so there's these little ones here, these are what I was using for um, a smaller size soft bait, oh not soft bait sorry, um, stick bait, I haven't got any handy right now, um, so these are, they're a 5-0 apparently, they look pretty small to me to be a 5 bar but um, they've just got, I think it's 100 pound assist cord on them, and then these are a nine bar row. So basically, I'll show you guys how I tie these. Push this one off, take this one apart sort of thing. And then I can show you guys in detail how I tie them. So they're actually real easy to take apart as well. If you ever just wanted a big old hook for live baiting, like a big old J hook, they're easy as to take apart. So I get the assist cord, this stuff, Kevlar assist cord, um, I roll it over and cut the length that I want, to establish the length that I want I'll usually grab a lure and I'll sort of hold it, the loopy sort of end I'll push that against where I'm going to be connecting it and then I'll lay it back on the lure sort of thing and then you kind of pretty much get I think it's roughly the length of the shank of the hook and you can lay that the bottom of your tag end I'll show you. it's hard to show you guys the bottom of the tag end you can pretty much lay that on your shank from the tip of your eye back to the end of your shank and then that's about how much you're going to have on actual length after you've tied the assist hook so from there get the assist cord both ends pinch it so that it's even on the tag ends and then tie it in basically just a granny knot and you want the granny like the actual knot itself to be pretty close to the tag ends but not so close that it's going to slip over and then through the knot you want to follow your tag end so the tag end comes through the knot you want to follow your tag end with the point of your hook 
through the knot, roll your hook over, and then I like to pull it pretty nice and tight. You can adjust the knot a little bit for length. You can always adjust it later as well, like if you've got a big amount of tag end left, you can push the knot back down the hook a bit, or you can push it up closer to reduce the length if you're feeling like there's too much length on it. And then push it through the eye of the hook, and then bang, you are done. There you have an assist, and then you pull it real tight, and I usually get the pliers and pull the tag in tight as well against each other that and then to connect it to your lure all I do is I just push it straight through the eye of the connection point on the lure so I don't use a, um, a split ring for this like I have there I just go straight through the so in this case it's a swivel that's built into one of Mike's lures I just push it straight through the eye of the swivel and then loop it back over top of the knot, or back over the top of the hook, sorry, back over the knot, grab the hook, boom, you're ready to roll. So that's on there nice and tight, it's not going to go anywhere. And then when a fish grabs that, it's not too far down, you know, that's pretty good for length. It's not far down enough to have this one hook over it, because that's real frustrating. Um, and if you feel like that's too far, you can always just tighten that up once it's tied on there. So don't get annoyed and think, oh, if I make it too short, I can't loop it back over the hook to connect it here. What you do is you tie it along, and then you put it through, make your connection, loop it over it, and then you can loosen this end off and tighten that end up to reduce this length here so that this is you know way closer up here sort of thing and then you can always cut your tag end off right at the end or like on some of my other ones like this one here i've tied that one up myself and then i've just put some shrink wrap over it there you go um so with these needles that i made and i made up a whole bunch of um assist just lengths of not assist sorry <laughs> bridles i made up a whole lot of bridles and just put it all in an old power bait bag so that i'm not just throwing away heaps of ziploc plastic bags i thought i'd just reuse some of them and these ones aren't like hard out centered they're not like your normal gulps that have a whole lot of juice in them they have no juice in the bag um so they're a nice clean dry bag so i've made these up I just made two of these up out of some um, stainless steel wire. This is the wire that um, Mike puts through his on top lures. He gave me a couple of lengths so that I could, I was going to have a go at trying to make my own lures. Gave it a crack. It was a mission, so I gave up. So I was like, oh, I'm going to make myself some um, bridle rig needles. And then what I've done after that is I've got always ready to go in the bag. Well, that's all kind of tangled up now I've always got ready to go a spare livey rig or trace really ready to go so a big old circle it's not a real huge circle like size wise but it's a really thick shank so and then I've just got some I think that's 150 pound trace and I've always, and I've got it together with that which I can also use on a bridle rig um, the reason I don't use a huge hook is I can always, like that'll handle up to like a three kilo um, car wire. It's not gonna pull off that hook. It's not gonna be bad to use that size hook. But I can also use a mackerel to like, you know, quite a small mackerel on that same hook. So I'm not having to chop it off when I've already got that real good connection on there. That's a um, AG chain knot pre-tied on there. And then I can just tie this end off to my other trace, which is usually a swivel and then I'm ready to go. And then above that swivel, if I really want to, I can have a, um, a sinker to drop the baits down. And then on here, I've just got a bunch of um, bridle rigs already ready to go. And it's just kind of twisted onto this little um, 
it's like a bread tie, one of those twisty bread tie sort of things. And I've just twisted that up so that they can't go loose in the bag. And when I want one, I just untwist that, pull one off, and I'm ready to go. So it's my bridal rig setup. I've just always got that in my bag, ready to roll. So that if the kingies are being a real pain in the ass and just following your stick bait every time, I'll chuck a lovey at them or just drop a lovey in the water and let it free swim and hopefully they'll eat that instead and quite often they will. Sometimes kingfish are kingfish and will just tease you all day. Um, so yeah, those are those couple of things. And then stick bait colours. Um, my favourite stick bait colours, I think I might have taken you guys through this once, but take it through your take you through it again. Um, I again go for real natural sort of colours, colours that are gonna work well in my area for what baits around. So mullet colour, the old mully, um I've got loads of mullet colour laws. I think I've got four or five mully colour lures from OTL. They're just a really good lure to have throughout the whole season, especially through the mullet run, which I think is like late December through to late February or something like that, when they're sort of spawning and they're congregating around um, their spawning areas, basically, which there's a few of them up here. I'm not going to tell you where they are, you're going to have to find out for yourself and then if you can find those spots you'll probably be into some fish um, this one here I got done by Mike a while ago so this is one of his flying fish renders um, I just wanted something different that was a bit different to his original sort of flying fish um, so the OG flying fish this one here is an OG and this is my original flying fish which Mike actually nicely gave to me on a trip and I kind of never gave it back because I've caught too many good fish on it now and I don't want to give it back <laughs> um, so yeah I got this colour here anyway back to this colour got this made up and it's done really well lately um, through the peak of summer when we actually have flying fish around this is real good to have and then also when you get to schools of kawai Trevally and Coe's feeding on the surface, or can be those individually feeding on the surface, all mixed together. This will kind of match all those fish because of its colours. It's got a lot of flash, which all those fish have on their belly, and then it's got the real kind of natural bluey sort of colours, which all those fish have. Um, a lure that I really, really love using is the OTL Piper. This one's seen some um, seen some hard days it's had a beating it's caught a lot of fish really good lure definitely one to, ha to have in your tackle box if you fish harbors and harbor entrances or um, areas where you've got like real nice little bays where a lot of piper hold and you might see kingies busting up in those bays that is a real good lure to have in your tackle box um, this is a pretty different lure I've only used this a handful of times, but the, pretty much the first time I used it, it got smoked. So I was talking to Hamish for a while, coming up with the design of this lure. Um, so this is an NACL. This is the only NACL I've actually got, and it works really well. Um, I wanted to come up with a squid design in quite a bright colour, because a while ago, probably, ought to be three years ago, actually, the first trip out on my boat, after I'd just bought it, um, me and my wife came across a bunch of tuna feeding on squid and I could see the squid when they were like panicked on the surface lit up like a bright sort of orangey squiddy colour and that's why I went with that colour. Um, I've also caught a couple of arrowhead squid, I think I've only ever caught two and they were quite a bright orangey sort of colour so it's not often that I'm going to come across that situation but certain times of year it might just happen and it's always good to have something kind of just different that stands out in your in your tackle kit um, 
something that I got just lately as well. This lure here from Option. So this is a, a diving pot or a swim pot. It's actually already had a swipe. You probably can't see it, but there's a big old swipe mark on there with some teeth marks on it. So I took this out for the first time on the weekend and it had one fish swipe it and miss the hooks, unfortunately. That's sometimes a downfall of using singles is that you won't get as many hookups. But the reason I like to use them is once you are hooked up, you quite often stay connected. Once that thing's sunken into a into a jaw, it's you know it's pretty hard to get out. Uh, whereas um, trebles can kind of because trebles three, it can kind of get in each other's way when it's setting in and it'll impede itself from actually sinking in. If you know what I mean, because it'll two will get in and. and one might be in a real nice easy spot to sink in and then the other one might be on a real gnarly jawbone or something like that so it'll kind of impede itself from sinking in properly that's my theory anyway i don't know if it's true but that's how i see it um i've filmed another little section which i'll add on to this which is um how to do the ag chain knot it was a real hot day and i was doing some stuff around home and i'd had a few beers before i filmed this so might be a little bit average I'll have a look through before I chuck it in here, but hopefully that helps as well. So, yeah, that's today's little few tips. All right, guys, so um, I've got some spare time. I've just been tutoring around at home, cleaned up my boat trailer, gave it a bit of a birthday, just um, pulled the boat off it and gave everything a real good going over with uh, the Corrosion X, marine grade Corrosion X and all that. Gave it all a real good sort of a um, birthday <clears throat> now I've got some some spare time I'm gonna go on a little bit of a fishing mission tomorrow and stay the night and then probably fish all day the next day as well so before I go I'm actually just about to tie a um, a new leader on one of my stick bait rods on my light setup so I thought while I'm about to do that well, I've actually already tied the the leader on so it's already got the FG done and everything but I'm about to connect it to what I use for my um, connection to my lures so I'll just point this down a bit, bit of a horrible noise hopefully this kind of makes it a bit easier for you guys to understand how I do my knots so that there is the connection that I'm going to use so that's one of those NT swivels it's a number one the reason I use the number one it's still rated to like 212 kilo and it come, it's small enough to, that swivel there is small enough to fit back through my guides and my rods. So I can actually um, wind it all the way back and then store my rod. Like I can take my two piece rods apart and store my rods if I'm traveling or anything and still have my trace ready to roll. Um, so yeah, that's the reason I use these number one swivels. So I've got 150 pound leader, that's that Veribas ocean record and I'm about to show you just how I do my knot to my swivel with my leader and it's called an AG chain knot. The guy who taught me this knot was actually, well he didn't teach me it, he just told me about it and told me to have a look online and watch some videos, it was Mr. J.E. Wilds himself. Um, so it's the knot that I believe he still uses it and he rates it since I've been using it it's not failed me um, the reason that he uses it so much is it's it acts almost like a little bit of a spring so if you can imagine a, a kingy hitting your um, lure and you've got a super lock drag uh, you want a little bit of give because that's a lot of the time when you're gonna break your line is that impact and that's what breaks braid a lot of the time as well um, is sudden impact it might not be that that fish weighs more than what your braid is rated to but that instant impact lo overloads it basically so anyway I'll show you how to do this knot so what I've done is I've just gone through the eye of the swivel once um, and then you're basically tying a series of I guess you could call them like a granny knot but you're doing opposites so I'm gonna go 
that's my main line, my main piece of my leader there. There's my tag in. I'm going to go over my main line and up through the loop. And I like to wet that bit of line so it doesn't sort of ruin it. And then for your next one, I'm going to go back under my main piece of line. Back under, through the loop. Now, next one, over, through the loop. Every time I'm pulling it tight again, under, through the loop. Over, through the loop. So I do that about four or five times. And then I do a finishing knot. So finishing knot is just the exact same as the risotto finish on the um, the FG knot that I do. So take your tag end, there's your main piece of line. Take your tag end, push your tag end over top of that. Once again, create a loop under there. So you've got the loop like that and then work your tag end back through and back towards the knot. And I like to come through at least four times. Try and go five if you've got enough tag end there. Wet it. So it's three. Uh, haven't got a whole lot of tag end on this one. So I'll just go through four times. Give it a good wet. And then pull it back down on itself. And there you go. That there is the AG chain. So, um, still not wanting to focus this camera on my knot, but uh, basically, when you when you if you try this knot yourself and you give it a few pulls, you'll see the knot itself sort of open up and close. So this the first series of um, granny knots or half hitches, whatever you want to call them, they actually they kind of they're tight like that and then they start opening up and closing as you put pressure on them so they act like a spring that's basically the reason why we use this knot is that there and it's also it's a super strong knot like when you're under tension for a long period of time it holds and it is going to constantly be um, relieving the pressure on the rest of your line and all your other components by acting like a slight spring it's almost like a shock absorber in your car I guess um, so I cut my tag end off and once again as well with doing that that finishing knot there which I think it's called the risotto finish you're having the finishing knot working back against the main knot which is trying to go that way so you got two knots opposing each other again um, that's but yeah that's it that is how I do my connection and then when I want to change my lures in a hurry, what I do is I grab using my pliers that are attached to my belt, but these are some that I have in the um, shed all the time. So I leave the split ring on my lure all the time. And to change over, I just open the split ring and just go like that. Boom, ready for another lure, grab another lure, and then same thing again, bang on, there we go, ready for another cast. So, super um, efficient I guess, that connection, or that style of connection, and ridiculously strong, like, there's not much that's going to break that.